Rhoda Friedland lives in Muncie, New York. She was married in 1947. We had the list he fit us with the previous Rebbe. It was on a Thursday night and he died on a Shabbos. Rabbi Heck was the one who took us into him. I was having problems. I couldn't have a child and I was not feeling so well. And Rabbi Heck said we should go in and ask for a bracha. Priya Dika Rebbe had a radiance that as soon as you went into the room, you, you felt you felt it. And um, Rabbi, he, he was also paralyzed. He had suffered terribly in Russia. And it was hard for him to talk. And Rabbi Heck bent down and spoke into his ear. I remember the Rebbe saying to Rabbi Heck, did they go to doctors? And uh, Rabbi Heck said, yes, they went to doctors, but the doctors say she won't have children. And the Rebbe laughed. His head went like this. He was paralyzed, but he moved his head. And he laughed. And he said, they'll have children, and they'll have healthy children. And uh, that was it. So we went out. We went out from the Rebbe. It was in 770 upstairs, you know. And Rabbi Hecht slapped my husband on the back, and he said, I'm going to be the Sandik. After I got the bracha from the Friedeke Rebbe, it didn't happen that I had children, and I used to get sick. So this continued with going to doctors and them telling me I should have an operation. If I had the operation, I wouldn't have children. And every time I got an answer from a doctor, I would tell the Rebbe. And the Rebbe kept saying, if my shver said you'll have children, you'll have children. No operation. At one point, I went into the Rebbe, you know, and he said, go see my wife's doctor. And he gave, I went to his wife's doctor. Now, this doctor was very, very ardent about my having an operation. She thought, she said, you, 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 you can get very sick. This can be very bad for you. You must have the operation. So I went right from her office to 770. We knocked on the Rebbe's door. And he, he, you know, at that time it was possible to do that. He let us in and we, I said to the Rebbe, I went to your wife's doctor. She said I should have the operation. In the meantime, when I was there, the phone rang and it was this doctor calling the Rebbe. And this doctor said to the Rebbe, if you don't let this woman be operated, you're going to kill her. And the Rebbe said, okay. He hung up the phone. He looked at me and he said, see another doctor. And I saw another doctor. It went on like this for a while until finally, I, I, you know, I was young. I didn't understand what a Rebbe was, that if he said something, that was it. You know, I thought I could, he, he gave suggestions. So um, at one point I went to, after I had been sick, I went to another doctor, very big doctor in Park Avenue. I, the Rebbe said, only see big professors, don't go to little doctors. And uh, I went to this doctor and he, after the examination, he, 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 without asking me, he went to the telephone, called Mount Sinai Hospital and booked me in for two weeks to have an operation. And he said, I'm not listening to your stories about rabbis or anything else. You're going to be operated. You need it, and that's it. And he convinced me. So I went to the Rebbe, and I said to the Rebbe, very foolishly, thank you so much for all the help you've given me. Thank you for caring about me. But I decided to have the operation, and I'm booked for two weeks. And the Rebbe said to me, would you do me a favor? I said, of course I'll do you a favor. He said, do me one favor. Go to one more doctor. Not a regular doctor, a big professor. Anyone you want, but a big professor. I said, all right. You know, he said, just one more doctor and that's it. So I had a cousin who had recently given birth and had gone to a big doctor. I asked her, and she gave me the name of a doctor, and I went to him. And after the examination, he said, I can understand their point of view. There are, there are problems. He said, but also, what I want you to do is go home and get right into bed and not get out of bed for any reason, because you may be pregnant. 
And I went, I went home, called the rabbi and told him, and the rabbi said, good. And I was. <laughs> and I stayed in bed. And that's how my son, Benjamin Mendel, was born. <laughs> I did him a favor. <laughs> and Rabbi Hecht was signed. <laughs> and then there were other two more children. <laughs>